ladies and gentlemen, today we are reviewing the Webmax 7-inch touchscreen for the Raspberry Pi. But this review unit was sent to me by the company. A huge thanks for that. But all these thoughts, everything in this video are my own and they are all personal thoughts. So now that we know that, let's get started. So first of all, this is a 7-inch touchscreen made especially for the Raspberry Pi 4 and 3. And it comes with a resolution of 1024 times 600. So you might think, hey, that honestly isn't a very good resolution, but you do have to consider this is a seven inch screen. It's not some big screen where you want a lot of pixels. This is a smaller screen. So having all those pixels, honestly, doesn't make that big of a difference. So no, so yeah, that's why it's kind of a lower resolution, but on a small screen like this, it really doesn't matter that much in my opinion, it fits well. So the cool thing about this, it actually has these little mounting brackets right here for your own Raspberry Pi. It doesn't come with a Raspberry Pi, but it comes with the screws needed to mount your Raspberry Pi on the back of the board like this. So you have a really nice all-in-one type of tablet thing. And so what we have right here, we have this little adapter. It's taking the micro HDMI to the HDMI of the board for display. But sadly, you can't get touch from that on the Raspberry Pi. So you have to have this kind of cable connecting from touch right here. If you can tell, it says touch under there to our Raspberry Pi. One thing I do wish was a bit better, the cord right here, that's a really long cord for a board like this. So when you're using this seven inch touchscreen, it's kind of just hanging around right there. And it, it is a bit annoying because that is an incredibly long cable for just a small touchscreen like this. So that is one complaint that I do have about this board. Next, we do have some speakers right here. I will show them later once we go into an operating system and they actually don't come on here. You actually have to connect them yourself. And other than that, we basically just have HDMI right here if you were connecting a different display. I mean, this display obviously will work with like your computer, your desktop, anything you want. It's a nice little side display to have if you want a small touch display. So that is a cool feature and it all just, it works pretty well. Right here, we're able to control the backlight and the volume. That's what it says we can do at least. And next, that's basically all the awesome features of this little screen. It's really compact. I like it being seven inches and that I can mount my Raspberry Pi on the back. And if you were using a Raspberry Pi 3, no worries. They actually come with a little kit right here with the needed adapters for the Raspberry Pi 3B. I, of course, because I'm using a 4, I used the Raspberry Pi 4B package. So it comes in this box right here that is honestly, it just comes in this little box right here. But one complaint I have, this kit did not come with any instructions. None at all. I couldn't find any instructions on the website. I couldn't find anything anywhere. So I kind of had to guess where things go. So it was a bit complicated to get this thing set up. So I do wish that they would maybe in the first further ones that they would include some type of instruction guide because you might get mixed up where to put the speakers where to mount these different brackets and stuff that is just the only complaint i have so far about this board and it actually comes with these little things right here and you can actually have this sitting up so there's there's these little circles right here you see this kind of just slides on there like that and then it just sits up like that i'm not going to do that for this video because i don't have a good setup but it's cool that they include that if you do want to mount this little screen on your desk next to your laptop with your Raspberry Pi connected or anything like that. And to turn this thing on, we actually do need external power. There's no battery connected to this screen, as you can tell. So we actually have to be connected to the wall or we need to have a pretty hefty power brick. So that is also one downside. It looks like really compact, like you carry around your backpack, but you are gonna need some type of power connected to this to work, but you only need one cable. The screen will actually get its power from the Raspberry Pi, so you don't have to worry about two different cables. So let me get my cable right here. So now I have my cable and all you have to do basically just connect it to the port on the Raspberry Pi and I am going to be booting up into Raspberry Pi OS, nothing else. So we connect that, you see the lights are on of my Raspberry Pi. We go right here, it says no signal, but soon it will actually turn on and we will, we will be ready and to go. Alrighty, so now we're booted up into Raspberry Pi OS and we can start taking a look at Raspberry Pi OS on a small touch screen like this and really see is it any good well we'll check that out but first i do want to mention i'm sorry for my bad recording as i grow i hope to be able to get better equipment and just do better recording but currently i'm i don't have the best equipment to be able to do the best 
videos for you guys, but I hope this at least is all right for now. So now let's get started and take a look at Raspberry Pi OS. So we're on the small touch screen and let's say we just go like that. You see, I mean, the responsiveness of this thing seems to be fairly good. We can move around like this. We click right here. We see our applications. If we went click accessory, because we could see all these different apps. Let's go file manager. Since it is so small, it's so easy for my finger to just hit somewhere else. If if you were someone with smaller fingers, it probably would be easy. But like we try to open the downloads and we can accidentally hit the one next to it. So it is a bit complicated like that. And the exit buttons are really tiny on a 7-inch screen. But obviously, Raspberry Pi OS isn't meant for touch use it's meant for a desktop use so that is one of the problems with it obviously and at, there's no keyboard on here a touch keyboard that comes pre-installed so what i actually did i opened up terminal after booting up into this thing and i actually had to use a keyboard for this part i typed in sudo apt install matchbox dash keyboard after installing matchbox keyboard it's over in accessories it's called it's just called keyboard right here click keyboard you kind of have a touch-oriented keyboard. Kind of looks like the Windows version of it. But is it all right? It's all right to type on. It's not a huge joy, but it, it works. Like, if we wanted to type something like LS to see what's here. Well, I mistyped that. So it's really easy on a small screen like this to kind of hit the wrong key. But you see, I was able to type in LS, and it works. So it's just... It, you don't really have that button at the top. I haven't figured out how to get this on the taskbar, but is, is it a touch keyboard? It works. It, it's all right. So that is basically Raspberry Pi OS on here, but I haven't showed the backlight or the speakers because right here on the back, it states that you can change the backlight and volume, but as I can't, I can't, or anyone on the Amazon reviews of this product, they see that the backlight changing does not work. And is that true for me too? It is, Sally. I have not been able to change the backlight whatsoever. And that's just kind of a bummer because I was hoping to be able to do that. But I just can't figure out how to do that. So sorry about that. But our volume right here, it says volume. If you change this right here, sadly, it's not actually going to be changing the speakers on here. When changing the volume from the system itself, it really doesn't do anything helpful. So to change the volume, you actually have to go back right here. You just hold the volume up right here. You see it, it says that I'm doing the volume up right here. Or am I doing it down? I was doing it down. So here we have volume. I'm I'm increasing the volume right here. Let's make it 100%. Let's see how good the speakers actually sound with a YouTube video right here. So let's open up Big Bug Bunny. Alrighty, so I got the video up. Now let's try playing it with the speakers. So here are the speakers going. Listen for a few minutes. So, are they crazy good speakers? No, but, I mean, they're not terrible either. They they sound all right, and they're, they're fairly good. But one issue that I've had in basically all the operating systems I've been using on this touchscreen is when I'm trying to go around the operating system, I get these popping sounds like you just heard. So, to disable that, when not using the speakers, I just go right ahead, and I turn the speakers all the way down, and then I don't run into any issues. It is kind of weird that I get those popping sounds, but... With disabling it, I do get a little bit better performance. So if we wanted to Google something too, let's try Googling with that touch keyboard in Raspberry Pi OS real fast, and then we'll head over to a different operating system. Accessories, keyboard. I keep on doing that, hitting the wrong thing. That's the problem with Raspberry Pi OS. Close that out. All right, so here we'll just type Pi. So here we got Pi, and it loaded up all right, and you can kind of scroll down, go through this thing, and does it work all right? Sure, the touch is incredibly responsive, and yeah, but honestly, I don't love Raspberry Pi OS on this touch screen if you're wanting to use this for a touch. If you're just wanting a small monitor, Raspberry Pi OS might work better if you're going to be using a keyboard and a mouse, but in, in terms of touch, Raspberry Pi OS is not the best option. So let's have, head over to Android 11 and test Android out on this touch screen. Alrighty, so now we're in Android on our Raspberry Pi with the 7 inch touchscreen. And one more time, I want to say, I'm sorry that my camera looks so bad. It makes the screen kind of look bad, but the screen is a lot better than you're seeing from this video. I just currently don't have the best equipment because 
I'm a small YouTuber and I, I, yeah. But hopefully in the future, I'll be able to grow and just bring better videos to, to you guys with better, better looks and stuff. But I hope this works out for now. So now let's take a look at Android. Android is more of a touched based operating system rather than Linux or Raspberry Pi OS. So obviously it runs so much better on this touch screen. It's just so much more touch oriented. So let's we can look at all our applications right here. And this is the build from Constant King. I will leave a link to this in the description if you do want to download this yourself. But honestly it performs really well on here. We can see all our apps. If we went over to settings we can just scroll around and it really just is super responsive. And I love how touch oriented it is compared to Raspberry Pi OS. So if we if we want to look at some web browsing we go over to Firefox which is my preferred browser on Android. It just works really well. We'll test out that YouTube in a little bit, but if we wanted to do something, I mean, and you do have a pre-installed keyboard on here since this is, is Android, it's not Linux. So that is also really nice to see. So we type in Pi 4, scrolling, everything like that. It's really smooth on this little guy. Like if I wanted to hold this in my lap or something, I totally could. Just the only issue would be power, obviously. And we click this one right here from Amazon right here. You see it loads up fairly quick. We can scroll. And it just is really nice to see how well it's working with my touch. And that issue that I said in my last video with the speaker being at 100 and all those boom noises is totally valid on Android as well. It is terrible. It's even worse on Android. It's like every minute. So if you're going to be using Android without speakers, I mean, I would recommend just putting those speakers down to zero for the best experience. But browsing and everything on android is totally valid it works well if we went over to youtube.com and if we wanted some let's say big buck bunny right here and this is actually going to be even better than let's say raspberry pi os and it, it, it's just responsive it all works well and i'm just so happy with the performance of android on this screen so far so that's basically it but now i'm gonna take a look at some apps like games one more issue i've had with android is this you know android obviously has screen rotation enabled if i go auto rotate turn that on if i try to turn this vertically it will not turn whatsoever i don't know why i guess there's some issues with that but i cannot get it turned so some apps that only work vertically like i will show you in a minute work halfway to the screen which is kind of annoying i wish it would turn vertically but there really isn't anything i can do about that like subway surfers is one of those games Look at that. Instead of turning sideways, we only have that little bit of screen usage right here, which is pretty annoying. But is it usable? I mean, it is usable, but you wouldn't want an Android tablet like this, obviously. But it, it, it works, I mean. So let's just show you guys the performance on this and how it plays with this touchscreen. So, I mean, you see, I can jump, I can scroll, I can really do anything I want. And it seems to be working all right which is really surprising for a raspberry pi and a small touch screen like this you see i'm not losing any responsiveness and i just died right there because i'm talking but it, it does work so that's cool to see this game running pretty well on here we can just exit that one more game let's take a look at hill climb rising not rising racing for goodness sake and then we will be done with Android. And I want to show you guys one more really special operating system for a small touchscreen like this, which you guys will think is pretty cool. So here we are. Hillcom Lace Racing is just loading up. And then we'll be ready to go. All right, let's go start. So here we are. I go start, you see, and I mean, it's just cool to see a little tablet like this with a Raspberry Pi, and I love it being small, it's compact, it's nice, and it's just a really nice device. And I love the Raspberry Pi, but do I usually run Android on my Pi? I usually prefer Linux on my Raspberry Pi, so that is one difference. But yeah, that's Hill Claim Racing, it runs really well, and it, it's just awesome. Did not mean to do that. So yeah, I mean, this is Android. It, it's a nice interface. It works well with this touchscreen. And that's basically what I have to say about Android with this touchscreen. Now let's head over to the last operating system I want to show you guys. So here we are in our last operating system. And this operating system is called Crankshaft. 
Crankshaft is basically an open source version of Android Auto, which runs on the Raspberry Pi. Android Auto basically allows you to plug in your Android phone. It's basically meant for cars and takes that interface, makes it bigger, more accessible for cars. And with this seven inch touchscreen, you could kind of make your own one of those, even put it in your car. No Spirit Tech actually has a whole video on that, which I think is really cool. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But I think you guys should check this program out. It's really cool. So it doesn't look like much right now. But if we take our phone right here, here's my Android phone. Well, actually, it's not mine. But yeah, here's your cable. We, we just plug this straight into our Raspberry Pi right here. Just take that right there and just plug it in. Sorry, it's kind of messy right now. We just plug that in right there and just wait a second. Right there. And Android Auto should be recognized in just a minute. Here we go. Look at that. So it's really nice and big. We have Google Maps right here. We can literally look anywhere we want. We click this button right here. And here we see all of our applications in a really big way. And these applications are all supported by Android Auto. So they're going to work really well with this. And we have Spotify. We have Google Maps and everything like that. It should theoretically work. Spotify said it wasn't, but yeah. And because I don't have a microphone connected to this, audio sadly doesn't work either. Well, let's head back to Google Maps. And you see, Google Maps just really is nice. Like, if you're someone who uses Google Maps a lot in the city while you're driving, having a bigger screen, you will really notice the good things about it. So if we went right here, and we just went search for something like New York City, even though I'm far away from there. New York City right here. And you see, it's just going to load up fairly quick, 11 hours and 48 minutes. It's a long way. But you see, I mean, it does work, and you can totally start doing it. It will give you the whole route, and it, it just is going to work really well. So that is just one of the awesome features of this Android Auto. And I just think it's a really cool program to be able to run on your Raspberry Pi with this touchscreen. Like, if you have an old car, implementing something like this in your car isn't that hard. And it's a really cool project, and you will really see the benefits of it. So that is, I mean, that's Crankshaft. So yeah, final thoughts on the Wimaxit 7-inch touchscreen for the Raspberry Pi 4 and 3. Well, it definitely does get a lot of smooches if you use your touch. That's why they actually include a little nice um, wiping thing right here. I can wipe the screen. It works all right, but you do see a lot of smudges and stuff on the screen if you're using the touch a lot. Overall, it's a pretty good screen. There are some bugs with the speakers, the backlight. Those are my two main issues with this screen, and I really, I do kind of wish the cable was a bit shorter for touch, but other than that, it works well, it looks, I mean, the resolution for a small screen like this really doesn't matter that much, and overall, I've had a pretty fun time with this, I love having the touch capabilities with Android on the Pi, it just really makes it feel a lot better, and I love being able to mount my Pi on the back, and obviously this thing it doesn't come with any fans, so if you're going to be using this on the long run, you probably will want to buy some type of small fan or something heat sink for your Raspberry Pi so it doesn't get too hot. But yeah, I've had a good experience with this screen. What I recommend to you guys, if you're looking for a small 7-inch touchscreen for the Raspberry Pi, this screen really is a good option. I mean, it works well, and it looks pretty good, and I just enjoy it. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. It would be amazing to subscribe, maybe that like button. And yeah, thanks for watching.